Welcome everybody to Madness Wrestling Report. I am your host, Joe Madness. And to the left of me is, go ahead, present yourself. It is me, it is me, it is SG3. How are you guys doing, man? Long time no see, brother. How you been, man? You know, give me, give me a little fist, man. It's, it's been a while, guys. Uh, we're good to be back, and we're looking pretty good right now, man. I yeah. like the new setup. I like the new setup, man. It was nice. All righty, but you already know, man. Let's get into the report. All righty, first topic. SmackDown moves to the USA. How does, man, that's crazy. So uh, what do you think about it? You watch a little bit of the show? I watched a little bit of it, dude. I like I liked how they brought it up right away. First one, right away. Boom, bring in Roman. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. Hey, you know what? When I hit it up with the banger, bring the in OTC. Roman. Yep, right, right away. Right. One time. And then they had the cage match during the middle of the show. Yep. It was a nice touch, actually, because you were setting it up to the bigger part of the show by the end of the night, yep. obviously. And we also got, so if you notice during the end of the show, they actually gave out credits. So uh, Paul Levesque got credited as well as some other guy. I forgot his name. But they actually got credit during the end of the show. And I guess going forward, that's how it's going to start ending these shows now. Credits? Okay. Yeah. It was, was like kind of nice, you know, give credit where credit's due. So, I mean, overall, man, SmackDown to the USA looked pretty good. I mean, I have to say, and now that we know that Raw is actually moving to Netflix, I feel like they're trying to up and up the ad because they also got a new logo. Yep. Yeah, and also with the new logo, what came about? A new theme song. With uh, Nicki Minaj? No, right? uh, Megan Thee Megan the Stanton, thank yeah. you, there you go. Uh, which, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but eventually I feel like it's just going to grow on me. It's, it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, at first I mean, you're like, Ugh. But then after hearing it like the 30th time, you're like, 40th, ah, 50th, ah, maybe. You're ah, like, I bump that shit, you know? It's not going to be all buff, but it's going to be like one of those, all right, man, it's cool, it's there, whatever. Yeah, it's like, man, all right, whatever, it's a theme song, let's just go about it. But, I mean, overall, I do like the new look. Uh, I expected them to do like a new like a new arena and all, but I guess maybe that coming so up. So, supposedly, future. though, they're saying they're trying to bring back the fist that SmackDown had, the old school fist, the one that you know you're breaking through. Yeah. They're trying to bring that one back. That's the rumor I've been seeing. That's the rumor I've been reading about that they're trying to bring that fist back. Which I can see. Um, the only issue is, if you not notice, that they cut down the whole entrance arena. Because uh, during the time, WrestleMania, they got their most peak out of fans attending the show. Yeah. Yeah, so they had to cut I mean, down. We went to a couple of shows yeah. ourselves. And that, that was the time when they actually <laughs> cut down a lot of the entrance. Yeah. Yeah, so it's hard for me to imagine to bring out that big old fist and lose a couple of seats instead of filling them at this uh, point of WWE's, you know, fan attendance. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're starting to attend even more now, nowadays. And it's getting more expensive. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. You're telling me. So, and that being said as well, man, there's a little rumor going around that Monday Night Raw, when it moves to Netflix, is actually going to try to be two hours commercial free. Ooh. Yeah. While SmackDown is rumored to be three hours, Raw is going to go back to two commercial free. That's going to be interesting to watch. So now, hold on. Here's one more thing, though. As of October 7th, Raw goes back to two hours. That is actually yeah. on USA. So um, right now, we're already getting like a taste of that two hours feeling. When it goes back, literally in what two weeks? Yeah, literally, it goes right back, right, right around the corner. So I'm actually kind of happy that Roz goes back to two hours because I love the three hour show. But to be honest, man, who pays attention all three hours? I don't. Yeah, I don't I'll kind of tune out. Listen, man, I'm a football guy. I'm not gonna deny. It. I'm a football guy, so I'll kind of watch a little bit of of uh, Monday Night Football. And I'm like, oh crap, it's on. Okay, hold on, wait. Okay, let's go back. But like even then, it's like ugh, there's just a lot of filler. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing, man. Going back to two hours is just action packed, and you get people paying attention a lot more instead of filtering out a lot of the stuff that they don't want to watch. But you get back the, the storyline, the focus on the storyline. Mm -hmm. You're not getting just some, you're not just getting some random story trying to get put together. To see how you feel about it. Yeah. It's not that anymore. Or you get matches that just drag and drag and just keep dragging. You're like, oh my god. Just well, there's like seven it. different commercial breaks. It's like, why is it still the same match? We know what's gonna happen. Right, so it's uh, I'm excited for that, but then again, you get SmackDown moving to three hours, so it's like, damn, one way, but yay in the other way. So, Literally. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to feel about SmackDown being three hours. I really don't like the show. I don't think he's doing as great as Raw right now. So they really got to up and up the antics when it comes to SmackDown. And I'm, I can see last Friday they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they have. And I mean, right now it's like, 
for your only show to be on broadcast, you're going to have to. You have to go high. Yeah. I mean, whether whether cable TV is dying or not, you have to up the antics. And whether it's going to be PG, because, uh, you know, rumor has it that uh, when they move to Netflix on Raw. They're going back to MA. What really? Really what they say. I don't. I don't think so, because still, there's a t- uh, toy brand deal going on, and if, I feel like if they go with TV14, it's just going to be a little iffy about that, but they're going to try to go a little bit over the edge, I guess you could say. I mean, I feel like they're going to do the same thing that they did with The Rock. A couple segments here and there, so they're not going to go all the time, Yeah, but nah, a couple segments, not. and I don't feel like they're going to they're go too far back. I think right. it's like a step forward, but you're going to see a couple customers slip out here and there. Why, yeah. why deny it? You're going to see probably you know a little bit of blood. Why yeah. deny that? You're going to see a little bit of weapons. Why deny that? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like that's the TV 14 now you're looking at. Yeah. You know, it's not like when we were growing up when there was constant blood, constant chair shot, constant glass being broken, constant all that other stuff. It's not just cuss word here, cuss word there. You know, nothing to it. Get probably no nudity as they used to before. Well, I mean, it's a different know. era. I don't think we could have any yeah. nudity. Yeah, I think so. they used to. So it's like, you can see that it's like, it's not more professionalism on that point. Yeah. But it's going to go back to, okay, cool. We can cut you here, cut there. Who's okay with cutting? Who's not okay with cutting? Right. I mean, I'm very interested to see how it goes. And also NXT, we still got to wait the arrival of it going to the CW. Yeah. Which is actually kind of nice to see. Uh, and as well as they're going to have a few shows in a bigger arena, one in Chicago, obviously, with CM Punk. and that That's going to be sold out one. so quickly. <laughs> yeah, and then the other one, I think, is in St. Louis. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I Chicago, think it's St. Louis. Louis yeah, because they're close up and down. Probably Milwaukee, too, if they decide to do one over there. They'll yeah. probably do the same thing. Well, those two are definitely announced, so we'll see how the future of NXT goes. And their cross right now with TNA is going great. So, I mean, it's more to come. Uh, as far as as well as a couple of matches being announced for Bad Blood, we got two of my favorites. I'm just going to name two because we'll probably do a prediction of Bad Blood later on, maybe in a couple of weeks. But one of my favorites, for sure, Drew versus CM Punk, Hell in the Cell. Yes! It's time to finish the trilogy. Let's go. Let's go. Yep. In a Hell in the Cell. And bring back a legendary match. That we have seen multiple times in well, that you don't have the gimmick cages anymore? The red one, the blue one? <sighs> oh, hell no. Um, That's going to be exciting. I don't know who's going to win that one, man. And I don't want to make a prediction right now. But it's going to be interesting. One note to say is that Drew has bad luck in Hell in the Cell matches. He has never won one. So Ooh. that's an interesting fact for you guys out there. And that's all I'm going to say. Hold on, wait. Let me kind of stir one thing in this little pot here. Seth so Rollins come back to... To do something in this match. Could be, happen. could not. It all depends, man. Like Gosh, I said, predictions. Remember, we'll have a prediction. As you three did say a long time ago, to finish all this here, Triple Threat of WrestleMania. Yeah, I and think it, it's just too far, man. If you're already ending a trilogy, well, you're ending one, but you're not ending it fully. So I, I can see uh, something like that happen. I don't know, man. That's too far fetched, but hey, anything could happen. Uh, another one the Bloodline versus Roman and Cody Rhodes. Uh, so, on SmackDown, Nick Aldis got Roman and Cody in one ring. And, of course, they cut their mics. Roman says, this is my WWE. While Cody said, no, actually, since Mania, it's been my WWE. Drops the mics. The next thing you know, here comes the bloodline. They whoop their ass. They get them out the ring. And they both sign the contract for them to tag team against uh, Sol Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. And bad blood, and that's gonna be a banger of a match. It really is. I got my own predictions, but like I said, man, we're gonna leave that to another show. But I know that's gonna be a good one. It really is. Uh, spoiler, no spoiler. <laughs> like I said, man, you never know. Uh, so speaking about rumors here, Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley, aka the Motor City Machine Guns, yep. are rumored to already be heading to WWE. They're already pretty much there. They I said. guess they're saying that they already signed. That's and, rumor, and as yeah. far as brand goes, they're already heading into NXT. Yep. I think they're going to be the future tag team champs in NXT pretty soon. They're a great tag team. For those who don't know, they're from TNA. They're former tag team champions. Also, former World Heavyweight Championships, both Alex and Chris Saban, that's hold the titles before. Both great wrestlers, phenomenal tag team. Really like a generational talent that changed tag team 
back in the day that changed a lot of the indie scene. I guess I'll, you could say. I'll tell you one thing, dude. Well, when it comes to them, I am excited for the day they get that like the little taste against the Usos. Yeah. Get the taste against the New Day. Get a taste against um, <laughs> hell, even even for it. Um, DIY. I see more DIY and those type of guys because like the other guys, I don't know about the Usos ever rejoining. I feel like the way they've been going about separate it's been doing well especially for jay uh, really for jay yeah but th- when it comes to the nxt there's a lot of talent out there that there really gonna, is yeah but big also. tag team division and i think they're gonna do well and i honestly i feel like they're gonna dominate man i mean they're up there in age don't okay. get me wrong but they just they could still go they still look in great shape they still have the talent it's crazy a lot of people thought they're gonna sign with aew me personally but um, i can see why though yeah I but i guess in the end of the day the big leagues well, come on, let's be real. J-J-E. Why not? Why not sign? Why not end your career? And hell, if you do a great job, you might get a Legends contract. And that's money for life, basically. Super random. Um, Someone just signed a Legends contract with WWE. Jacqueline. No. Uh, the guy that used to come out with Umaga. God rest Umaga's soul. Oh, uh, Espera- Esperando or some shit like that. And so, it's, yeah, Esparza, something in Esperando. Esparza. Some Esparza, like yeah, him. He just recently got a Legends contract a couple days ago. I just saw that, actually. He just recently got a Legends contract. Well, that... Jacqueline... Armando Alejandro Estrada, that's it. Thank you. Yep, just signed a Legends contract. Thank you. Appreciate that. Armando Alejandro Estrada. Yeah, them, Jacqueline. And then I heard Trish Stratus actually supposedly doesn't have a contract right now either. No. No, which is kind of odd. Which be interesting to see what rumor comes about that. She'll get up with that just contract eventually. Her, Lita, all of them. They're going to get something. I would hope so, man. Um, one interesting note. Def Rebel Music is apparently on its way out of WWE. And for those who don't know, they're the ones that come out with your generic theme song for a lot of wrestlers from 2019. Pretty much still now. Yeah. Um, and if you notice, Megan Stallion being the theme song of SmackDown kind of tells you that they're trying to go more forward to actual artists instead of, you know, these generic theme songs. So apparently they're trying to get artists as well for wrestlers. So maybe like link up with certain artists for the bigger wrestlers. I mean, you already know that Orton's has his music. Cody's going to have their music. But for these new generational talent on NXT might have their own, you know, artists to go with them, which would kind of be interesting to see. I mean, it's kind of like what AEW does. They buy the rights to certain songs. Instead, they're not going to buy so- rights to the song. They're going to link up with them yeah. and give them, like, you know, promotional credit. Yeah. All right. So what do you think about that? I think that's actually good because um, it gives you, like, like a lot of creation because there was a point, there was a one WWE game where you could actually upload, like, your song, like a song, any song you wanted for, like, 30 seconds, and that was your theme song. Yeah, it was a couple of games like that, yeah. So the fact that you can now do this, like, basically, that game is coming true. So it's like people are going to say, well, you know what? Well, again, this person can say, I want to make it the stallion. Yeah. Um, other person, Motorhead. Yeah. Well, multiple times it came up with Triple H. Yeah. Um, or imagine J. Cole linking up with Wes Lee. Yep. Yeah, so it's like... And then not only that, but they're, both their popularity is going to link up. Because think about it. You get one side for rap group. be like, oh, shit, this WWE superstar has J. Cole. And the other side, oh, shit, this, this guy J- has yep. Wesley. You know, cross-promotion for both sides. And you're going to hear people saying, oh, J. Cole can rap and everything like that. So you can do that. Someone's going to get Kendrick Lamar. I think maybe the Street Profits get Kendrick Lamar. Never know. I'm, well, I feel like the established stars are going to already have their music. But when it comes to the NXT talent coming up, I feel like they're the ones that are going to benefit from this. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody right I, now pretty much is good to go. Good to lock in, you know, your John Cena's, your Randy Orton's, your Cody Rhodes, your Roman Reigns, you know. But I just feel like there's going to be a couple of them that they're going to have, like, even the established ones right now, that they're going to have, like, their own thing going forward as well. Uh, well, put it this way. I don't know if you heard recently a rumor where I think some guy was calling himself the American Nightmare and we're trying to sue Cody. Yeah, because he's yeah. been doing it for years. He's been doing it for a lot longer than Cody did. So think about that, man. It's like that's just too much rights to pay off, you know, for 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 even the bigger superstars. I feel like this is more for the smaller guys to mm. get a bigger push. That makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know, but anything could happen at that point. Um, I miss the old days of Jim Johnson. Oh, God. I really Jim do, Johnson, man. 
That guy. In case was, you guys don't know, he used to actually write the theme songs for WWE. A lot of them. Uh, he did The Undertaker. He the did Brood. The Brood. He did <laughs> Triple H. Triple H. Before Mortarhead came along. Yep. He did Shawn Michaels. Stone Cone. Big uh, Show. Big Show. Mark Henry. Sexual Heavy. Chocolate. <laughs> AJ Styles. D'Lo Brown. Yep. He did, uh, every, he did pretty much damn well everybody, dude. The Nation of Domination. Ahmed Johnson. And we're going back. Vader. Uh, everybody. Lita. The Hardys. Everybody. Dude. Like, literally, this man... Was a heart and soul. Yeah, look, bro, uh, broken dreams by doing for Drew McIntyre. Dude's got albums upon albums, dude. I really miss the time. I remember Drew. buying a WWF Volume Four, and he's credited in all songs. Basically, he's the composer of everything. So it, it's insane how much talent this man had, and how much he adapted as time changed in WWE. Because a lot of the songs were adapted to the time changing at the time. You know, he just transitioned very well. But here, here was the thing, because there was also times when people would change their theme, and he had, so imagine this, like, cool, you have a song up for like X amount of time, hey dude, in the blink of an eye, you gotta change this person's song. Right. Cool, so now you gotta sit there, compose something, kind of similar to the one you had before, but change something like, whether it's the lyrics, whether it's whatever, and it's it's something there. Right, right. So that's why it's like, it definitely shows you just his brilliance. That man was a genius. Yep. To do what he did. For all as long as he did too. Yeah, no, he was doing it for years. Um, I don't know what happened between uh, WWE at the time and Jim Johnson, but unfortunately they parted ways. Uh, but in the end of the day, man, I personally, me, I think he's one of the best composers of all time. I'm yes. just going to say this now, and I'm going to say it in the future 20 years from now as well. I think I agree with you 100%. There's, yeah. no, there's no question about it. Yeah, so, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with uh, for now on if they really are shying away from Death Rebel. Uh, let's go on to the next topic, guys. So, Brian versus McGinnis is set for Grand Slam on Wednesday, September 25th. This is a dream rematch, so to say. McGinnis was actually out of retirement for quite a bit and came out at All In as the special, you know, appearance for the Casino Battle Royal. And, dude, that reaction from the fans, they went wild, dude. That yeah. whole England plan, fans just went crazy. Loudest pop of the night. One of the loudest pop of the night, really. Uh, it's good to see that he's back in wrestling shape. He looked great. He has a fantastic body. I mean, trust me, I'm straight, but damn. <laughs> damn, that guy had a good body, though. I'm not going to lie. Disclaimer. But, but for, the guy, for a guy who hasn't been in wrestling really for a while, he was in tip-top shape. So put it this way, man. I really want to see this re-dream match again. I'm telling everybody, if you're out there, just watch it. It's free. Why the hell not, man? You're giving out free fucking five-star res- yeah. five wrestling matches. Why not? Uh, personal opinion, I would like to see McGinnis win the title. It's not going to happen, though. Uh, what do you think, bro? Honestly, I feel, again, same thing. Um, I think it's going to be a great match. Mm-hmm. Definitely good to fight. That's the one thing I love about AEW is the fact that they will give you pay-per-view quality matches for free. Basically. And it's like, you know what, dude, you know what? We understand pay-per-views are kind of expensive. We're not going to deny it. So we're not always going to charge you month in, month out. There's going to be a couple of times you guys go watch it for free on TNT. Oh, yeah. Turn on in and there you go. And then Brian has actually been giving out some of his best matches. I think, again, this is definitely his last run. And he has to go all out. So he's (laughs) definitely going all out, 100%. The storytelling is there. The the, the moveset. Everything like that. You can't just say like this is in this run right now that he's having. You can't sit here and say this is my favorite match with Daniel Bryan. It's not gonna happen because it's like you can't because it's like you have one and then damn he just did this one. Damn he just did this one. And he's just gonna keep going, man. He, Literally, he, he, this is his last run. We don't know exactly when it's gonna end, but it's gonna happen eventually. But at the damn well, man, it's been a good run so far, it's man. Been, yeah. Especially his old end match against Swerve. Ah, oh, dude, that's, I'm still talking about that to this day, I, dude. I'll be 100 percent honest. I wasn't a fan, but at this point, you know what? Cool. I see. I see the way you're going with it. Keep going with it, and we'll see when it finally eventually happens. When the when the dreaded time comes for Daniel Bryan to say, "Hey, it's it's my time." Well, like I said, man, tune in for that one. Hey, free five star matches. Why the hell not? not? Sign me up for it, bro. Uh, so let's go with a little bit of AEW rumor roundup. Hurt Business is in talks with AEW. Not surprised. Ah, uh, so apparently that's going to be Shelton. MVT, MVP, yeah, MVT. MVP and the man himself, Bobby Lashley. 
Look, if AEW can sign Lashley in itself, that's some big shit right there. That, that is. man is very talented, still has the look. I know he's up there in H, but he does not look the H. Neither does he move at all like age. he's old. No. no. Uh, I would love to see the Hurt Business, dude. A guy like MVP who has the my skills. Shelton Benjamin that can still go. He has know? the athletic ability for it. Yep, and he could help train the new guys in there as well, in the background. And as well as a big guy like Bobby Lashley, done right, by the way, could actually elevate a lot of the talent into bigger stars. In yeah. There. Yeah. I personally love it. I hope it happens because, I mean, wh- where else can you see them? Maybe TNA? But I, I don't, feel like... I don't think you see them with TNA, especially with the deal right now with WWE. Yeah, I'm going to say. And especially feel... what MVP's insane about yeah. Triple H. Yeah, I I mean, what do you think? Good fit? Bad fit? Mm. I think right now with what's going on, it's a good fit. Because, again, it's like you open up the storyline for a lot of things. Yes, we're going to get another stable in AEW. whoop de do, whatever, however you want to see it. But it's one of those situations where it's like, all right, cool. You could do a lot. If done right, can do a lot. Can grow. And, Criticism. again, and on top of that, hold on, wait. And on top of that, though, you could help the younger talent grow. Right. So you can help the younger talent who's trying to get to the next level. Hey, what can I do? Do this, do this, do this. So you have like the mentorship role in AEW. Uh, what were you saying though? My apologies. Criticism about it. Because there are going to be some. I, could really t- I already know one off the bat. Another stable in AEW. Lost in the shuffle. Especially yep. Bobby Lashley. We don't want another Warlow. <laughs> Failed experiment. Yeah. Yeah. And he was so over too. And unfortunately, he's now just a... Just whatever. Because when it comes to the big guys... I mean, yeah, in WWE, you had overdose and people got tired. But in AEW, they just bury and bury a lot of these guys, man. It's like, the way I see the AEW is like, they want a big guy, but they don't know what to do with the big guy. Well, they have a big guy face Orange Cassidy, and have Orange Cassidy basically kick his fucking ass. And there goes the big guy's career. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, they want the big guy, because the big guy, look at Wardlow. Got got the elevation, got, got got the cheer. Got everything, you know, he was his stuff with uh, with MJF. And then it's like, all of a sudden, you just are putting him in a bunch of random Job matches. Job matches and stuff. Literally, yeah. and it's like, so what happened? Um, and that's what I feel like it would happen. Unfortunately, it could happen with Bobby Lashley because he's so big. Like, that's the thing that's going to suck about it. Because, like, yeah, the dude can move. The dude is like, you know what? Unfortunately, I, he's not even going to be lost in the shuffle. He's going to be like Keith Lee. Got there, did a couple things, and then sent him on home. Actually, that's a good question. Whatever happened to Keith Lee? He's still, he's still, <laughs> he's still his sign. Yeah. He's still his sign, but yet he doesn't show hey, up on, t- on TV. Give you another name. At all. Miro. Same thing. I was just about to bring up Miro. Me? Same thing. Literally, Miro got signed. Miro had the hype. Miro did it. Um, he was in He was in Chicago when the first time they came for Forbidden Door. Yeah. Did it. He did his... Uh, did his whole spiel over there. I think he won the match against Parker. He was close to winning it. People were going crazy for him. You know, and then out of the blue. You know what's funny, too? I actually I actually say that AEW, when they had Miro, and when they were using him, they were using him a lot better than WWE, and they just disappears. Yeah. Yeah. They were doing a lot better job than WWE was using him, but then all of a sudden, he just disappears. And I know he had some issues, like, you I mean, know, family issues. Four changes recently got divorced. Yeah, depression probably. Yeah. Yeah, and injuries apparently. And, but all of a sudden he still disappeared. Uh, the only big guy I want to say that they've given him something, even though he's more of a jobber, Brian Cage. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the guy just gets buried and buried, man. I mean, the guy looks the part. The guy was TNA champion. He was over. But then when he went to AEW, he just got buried down to the ground. And it's kind of a joke, man. Um, but overall, man, I don't know. I hope to see them soon. They're All three men are talented. All three men they, are legends in their own right. And they don't have a lot of time left in the ring. Especially MVP. I know he's more up there in age. Oh, yeah. I feel like. He looks the part, too. <laughs> he looks up in there in age. But the guy has great my skills. He's yeah. going to be a great manager. He's, Imagine. I never heard this. Imagine the learning tree versus the hurt business. Yes, that's the one I was actually going for. You got, you got uh, Big Bill, Bobby Lashley, you got Keith, and uh, Shelton Benjamin, yep. and you got MVP versus Chris Jericho. That's great. That great. is some great shit. Great back and forth promos between Jericho and MVP, and they actually got into a real-life scuffle. 
I believe it. Yeah, okay. I, I forgot. I think at a hotel or something, it was real beef. Oh, wow. And I don't okay. think that's been on solve at all yet. So that's actually going to be a great heat for television. Um, So let's all move on to the next one, guys. AEW Shockwave on FS1. A Fox deal may be coming around, bro. So this is going to be an hour show, apparently. Not sure what. It could be matches or it could be highlights. But if it's on FS1, I want to say it might be highlights or something. I Remember, mean, they've been talking about <coughs> AEW getting out of TNT for a while now. It's not it's not just been a just a quick little, you know what, hey guys, this is a quick little rumor we're going to start talking about. No, they've been talking about this for quite some time now. Well, okay, so I guess we're going to combine these two rumors. So, uh, as well as for the WBD uh, deal going on, pretty much, that's already locked. So, when I was at uh, All Out recently... Tony Khan did come out, and he did say, look, guys, I'm going to say it because I love Chicago. I love you guys a lot. But us being in TNT and TBS, it's a sure thing. Okay. So he's pretty much announced that they're going to be there. This is actually more of them expanding to other networks. Ooh. Now that Fox lost SmackDown, they don't have a wrestling promotion. No. And they're not going to want to pay top dollar for another wrestling promotion, but you could still pay somewhat of a little bit of pocket change to a smaller promotion like AEW and put it on your uh, sister brother channel, so to say. Well, it's like it's like a, it's like a, a branch off the off the tray. Mm. That's what it is. So I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you basically add more time. Um, Tubi's as well is looking for a wrestling show. I heard. Who would that be though? Would also be AEW. Or would it be? It WWE? could be AEW. It wouldn't be bad. Oh, or, you know what? It could be NWA Power. It could, well, uh, I actually didn't know that Tubi is actually on my Fox. Oh, okay. I didn't know that So either. there could be AEW there. By the way, super random. Uh, there's one more thing. As of October something, WWE programming is going to be coming out of Hulu. You're no longer going to be able to see Hulu, uh, SmackDown stuff anymore on Hulu. Um, or any WWE shows on Hulu now. So if you had Hulu because of WWE, Good luck. you may want to be looking into Peacock. And actually, uh, and, 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 <laughs> and actually, speaking of Peacock, all of their content is moving out to Netflix. So oh. they're not going to be in Peacock. Either. Except for SmackDown. Except for SmackDown. SmackDown's yes. going to be on Peacock. Like Literally the hour after, yeah. it's going to be on SmackDown. It's going to be on Peacock. So that you're going to be clustered. Clusterfuck of fucking content all around, dude. That's You're gonna have a little bit of piece of here, a little piece over there in this streaming service. They're just gonna be all around, man. It's getting gonna get crazy when it comes to actually wrestling to watch wrestling. And in the rumor roundup, when it comes to AEW, apparently, rumor has it they're pretty much a done deal with HBO Max. They're Ooh. gonna have their pay per view shown finally in there, plus some content. Okay. So we don't have to pay forty nine ninety nine out of fucking pocket for these fucking pay per views anymore, man. Cause that's hurting my pockets, man. I love AEW and I love wrestling and I will continue to pay it. But damn it, give me a discount, man. I'll pay for HBO Max. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. My pockets are hurting. Economy's bad. Thank God for Tony Khan listening finally. Cause seriously, man, I'd rather pay twelve dollars a month or whatever it is compared to. 50 bucks a month for a fucking show, plus taxes. <laughs> Literally, plus taxes. You can never forget the taxes. Um, But that's the deal that should have been done a while back. I'm just happily is finally going to get it. And rumor has it, I feel like they're going to get double the contract they originally did five years ago, which is great. It's awesome. It's good for AEW. It's good for wrestling as a whole. Just that part right there. Yes, because like I said, the more... People show support for every single company. The more wrestling grows, the more, even if you're just a WWE naysay, right? Even they know the competition well. They do things that if this company does it, they'll do it as well. Take for notes. All Out was a violent pay-per-view. That Monday, right after the event, what do we got? A hardcore match between the Wyatt Six versus All-American Alpha. They yeah. were trying to kind of like, mm, and it was commercial free. Okay. Kind of a little compete like, oh, yeah, we got you guys, you know. Yeah. It was kind of a little jab back, which is like, they, they're watching the product. They have to watch the I product. I mean, look at the people they sign. Yeah. They're always look, lurking around. Look at the rumor with Ricky Stark. 
Yeah, yeah. They're always looking for talent, and that's the great thing. Wrestling as a whole is going to grow the more we support every single company. You don't have to watch the shows, but every once in a while, you know, give it some like, give it some support, you know? So just give it a shout out, man. Yeah. Any, uh, what about you, man? You want to chime in on any of these stuff? You know, the contracts or. What you want to see for the streaming service when it comes to AEW? Like, I just hope that they do something kind of like Peacock did with WWE. Hey, look, you paid. Cool. Keep watching this. This is not free. Me, personally, oh. I would like to see more Ring of Honor library from the old school days. When you had AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, well, Samoa Joe. Can you do Ring of Honor because of AJ? Well, you can. can. You do? Okay. Cool. TNA does it. Even before they had a, a deal with WWE, they actually had that. They have his library of matches, and they're actually legally able to show AJ Styles on the show. Jeff Hardy, when he was signed in WWE, they were showing them too. They could do whatever they like because it's their library. Okay, that makes so sense. yeah, it's not really on the wrestlers because the wrestlers don't really own so much of their image on other libraries. So that's a good question though that you brought up though. Uh, the Lucha Brothers as well, man. So Shadow. Yeah, I have to. I love that. I love doing that all the time. Well, put it this way, man. They're pretty much, I feel like they're pretty much gone from AEW because they're actually supposed to have a match in All In and a supposedly an All Out as well. Oh. Yeah, and I think they're pretty much out and I think they're heading to WWE. I heard rumors of them joining NXT. I don't, personally, I don't want to see that shit. I think they're way above the generational, generational talent. I feel like them, and also I feel like Mortar City Machine Guns should just jump the gun and join the big brands. Those guys are complete legends in the business. And when it comes to Lucha Brothers, they're getting up there in age, man. They really are. Yeah, they're not going to have these high-flying matches. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why they left AEW. They're like, hey, we could have these five-star matches out here, but we're old. Ray Phoenix just got injured not too long ago and came back from the injury. And he was out for like six months. And he's a... Dude is talented, though. He really is, though. Yeah. He, he's he high-flying. He's just crazy. His moves are very clean. But the thing is, you're getting up there in age, man. Play it smart. Join WWE. Get yourself a Legends contract. Get yourself paid. Get yourself well, man. You'll do a lot less work. I think at this point, it's also like the WWE style isn't always asking you to high-fly. Yeah. The WWE style is more a little bit more technical, a little bit more on the ground. So. Mm-hmm. I do. I have seen that there's been a couple matches with Lucha Bros where they try to go technical, but then it's like, nah, you gotta go. Um, you gotta go this way. You know what? There's a question that was just asked: Lucha Bros to SmackDown. Could that be a possibility? They need to uh, up and up their roster. So if they're gonna do three hours, damn well sign them. I sign the Mortar Machine Guns to SmackDown too, man. Yeah. Those two tag teams will tear up the house. Especially, have them face each other. Especially because right now the tag team division on SmackDown really does suck. I mean, what do you think they're signing tag team divisions in the first place, man? They're trying to get that stuff going and stuff. I, and especially if you're going to put your show three hours, you got to get more big names, bro. You yeah. got to get more big names signed. You got to get more big names from NXT moved into the brand. Um, Personally, well, man. Then, I'm, I'm gonna, let me ask you a question. Since we're talking about absences and everything, we, we're talking about the tag team. Dude, whatever happened to Pretty Deadly? Pretty deadly. Man, that's a good question, man. Like, dude, they've just been cameos, little comedy sketches here and there, but like nothing since they went up from NXT. And they were supposed to be the hot stuff when they came up. Pretty deadly. What was that? The dude dudes, the dudes like wear like the mid shirts and all that stuff with the long hair, one blonde, one one darker hair from England. Oh, those guys. Yeah. yeah. The fact that he didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while, man. It's been yeah, a lot of stuff. They were in SmackDown for a while. They still are. They still are, but they haven't really done much besides that's, backstage. That's why I said backstage yeah. cameos, little sketches here and there, and then jobber man. But that's the thing. It's just that WWE doesn't focus well on tag team division, and I'm hoping with these new signings that they're trying to get, they get it back together. I don't want to see backstage promos. I want to see wrestling. Yeah, yeah. We had good tag team division years ago. We really did in the 2000s, mid 2000s. But I don't know what happened, man. All of a sudden, it just disappeared. We had two tag team titles and two different promotions. For what? And one is doing good with their tag team. The other one just... Mm. Yeah. On Raw, great. On SmackDown, what the hell, guys? Step it up already, man. You're going to move to three hours. You're going to have to do something. Help. Bring Pretty Deadly and get their asses whooped. Or have them whoop some fucking ass, but have them do something, man. 
And at first, I'm like, who are they? But then I'm like, then I'm like, dude, short shirts, yeah. long hair, you know. <sighs> Thanks for reminding me on that You're one. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but, all right, so I want to have a little discussion, actually, about All Out. Okay. okay. I'll be honest with you, and I'll watch it. All right, but you saw all the, uh, pretty much all. I saw, I saw a good chunk of highlights, a good chunk of, of stuff on, on social media. Oh, uh, you saw all the violence, though. Yes. Yeah, you saw the trash bag over Daniel Bryan. The well, not bag. the trash bag, but, you know, the, yeah, the bag the over bag, Brian yeah. Danielson. You saw the needle going to Swerve Strickland. Yeah. You saw the cylinder block. Cylinder block was used, mm-hmm. yes. You saw the uh, Stat Skylander versus Willow. Yeah, match. was a... Was it split? Woo! Thumbnails. Ugh, that got hurt. Yeah. You I saw how saw violent it got. All it around. Got, it got, yeah. It's like, you know what, guys? We're going to, WWE wanted to have their one night stand. We're going to have our one night stand here. So, a couple of fans got a lot of criticism for the product. I just want to get your take. There's no right or wrong answer. It's your opinion, obviously, man. Uh, what do you think? Oh, oh, the whole show, like what you saw. You didn't see it, but what you seen personally. It was violent. I'll tell you that, dude. It's been a while since I've seen a violent wrestling event. Do you personally think that they went too far, though? There's certain things that I'm like, why? So the cinder block, they were like, he landed on his head. No, it didn't. On the back of his neck. Back of his, and then back of his back. Yeah, yeah. back of his back. Uh, the needle was a little bit too much. Like, I don't understand what that was for. I like, just, just to numb his mouth. Well, that was a hell of a reaction because I was there in the crowd. We all went, like, as in disgust, but went, in, like, in the shock factor. Yeah. Yeah, we were lost in words. It was shocking. Um, What's it called? Uh, What do you think about Brian Danielson bag over his head when Moxley was basically trying to kill him? Well, basically, at this point, it just shows the fact that they're going to the extreme. And then they went. They went to the extreme of extreme. Not even ECW went to this extreme. No one televised. <laughs> MJF also versus Daniel Garcia during the end, too, man. That went a little violent, even for Daniel Garcia, that supposedly as well hasn't signed a contract. No. No, which is kind of odd. Uh, my, that that one says too. it, though. You may find him on the other side pretty soon. There's been a rumor. But either way, man, it, it was a violent night, man. Uh, what do you think about the criticism? Overall, man, did you like it? Did you... Listen, dude, as an old school wrestling fan that used to watch like these hardcore matches, we used to watch hardcore matches, Hell in the Cell matches, cage matches, all those matches, dude, where it was blood, it was gore. We used to eat was... the shit up. Yeah, and we used to like, oh, yeah, dude, give me more of it. So it's like, it's okay to have it. It's okay for this kind of stuff to be there every so often. Right. I just feel like some people just forget what we grew up with. Yep. And some people are just like, oh, because we haven't seen it in a long time. That, that doesn't make anything. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, personally, like you said, we grew up on it and it went well for us in the childhood. Now, we don't need to see it every single week on TV. But when it comes to the pay-per-views, All Out was a lot different from All In. Right? Two weeks difference. Is it because All Out was All Out and All In was like more conservative? Well, that about that. Well, yeah, well, if you think about it, this put it this way. There were two weeks apart. Now, last year, you had All In and All Out in a week span. All Out was like the B show. All In this year was a fucking great show. But All Out was a fucking insane show. That is crazy difference in only two weeks. You really stood out. And you had to stood out. I think it was great. I think the hardcoreness really stuck out of its own night. Like, this is one of those pay-per-views that you're going to be like, you thought at first, like, eh, it's going to be a B-show. But then when you saw it, you're like, holy shit, this night is crazy. I feel at this point, dude, the reason why they did what they did was because they re- Tony Khan pays attention to the criticism. Yeah. Whether we want to admit as wrestling fans or not, WWE marks or not, let's admit it. Tony Khan pays attention to what people are saying, and it's like, all right, cool, you guys think my show sucks? Let's make it better. You guys didn't like my show for XYZ reason? Let's make it better. I mean, last year I was there and it did suck. But this year, <laughs> God, dude, it was a big difference from all in. But it was great. I, I'm going to say this. From start to finish, everything was awesome. Well, again, because, well, firstly, you being there. Okay, cool. You being there. And being, it's a little biased, yeah. You being there, firstly. Secondly, though, but it's the fact that you sat there and said, okay, I'm expecting this. And when you got all the hardcore matches, you're like, dude, I was not expecting any, any of, this. of it. Yeah. So it brought like that oomph factor to you. Yeah. You know, and, and you know what? Let me just add one thing. We talked about, you know, how 
a lot of people sit there and they're like, oh, yeah, man, I didn't like it because it, it had too much gore and too much violence and all this and all too that. Too much blood, bags. <laughs> cool. And this one of my thing is like, all right, cool. So try eating something always for, the, for every single day. Right. How tired are you going to get of the same thing? Right. So as a wrestling fan, you sit there like, all right, cool, look, I'm tired of the G match. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of the, yeah, there's a little bit of gore, there's a little bit of hardcore stuff. But I, I miss, like, the blood. I miss, like, the cinder blocks. I miss the chair shot, the thumbtacks. I miss that stuff, dude. There's right. a couple of times where, like, Mick Foley has come on my timeline and I watch his match with Randy Orton. I'm like, oh, dude right here. Right. The edge match at WrestleMania 22, we were there. Yep. The set table the table on, on fire, fire bam, Man. right through the table. It was like, Down goes right. Foley. Yep. But it was like, okay, cool. I remember this stuff. His matches against Triple H and Hell in a Cell. Those kind of matches is like what really brought us to the product. And it's like a match, like a night like this, it's okay to do it. So you're safe to say that Hulk Hogan is right. Wrestling fans are fickle about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they really are. <laughs> like, I'm not a fan of the Hulk show like that, but I, I do agree because it's like mm-hmm. you can never please a wrestling fan. Yeah, you, you really can, bro. When, hey, I want hardcore. Hey, bring back the attitude era, bring back those crazy matches. Here you go. Oh, that's just too much, man. No, yeah. we can't do all that. Why, 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 are you putting, why are you putting the needle in a the filler mouth? box? Yeah, it's like, we didn't, we didn't need to go through all that. Oh, know? and by the way, that was a real cylinder block. Cause, yeah, it was. Uh, when they threw it down, we were there, it was loud. It, it, it felt heavy. You could hear it. It was crazy. But once you get everything going, dude, it was a great night. They gave the wrestling fans something to remember. This is like one of those pay-per-views you want to go back and watch it all over again. You know, and it's never going to get boring. You're just going to be like, dude, this is crazy. How are they going to top that off next year? This makes you want to go back next year and watch it, you know, live once again. To add to your point, it reminded me of WWE when they brought back One Night Stand. Oh, and, dude, this is what we missed and blah, yeah. blah, blah. We were missing like the tables and, the, and this and the that, all this and all that. Cool. And they've been saying it for years. Bring back this. We Bring want back the hardcoreness, yep. <laughs> oh, and then all of a sudden they bring it back and it's like, oh, that's that's too much. That's man. too much, man. That's, that's too extreme. Yeah. Wow. Oh, they, no. they, they didn't go through all that back before. I'm like, come on, dude. They went through worse. <clears throat> yeah, but um, quick joke out there that I thought was hilarious. Nyla Rose, AEW star, <laughs> recently said that uh, she went to Target and they put her a Brian Danielson figure into a plastic bag and she said, hey, that's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say that was a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> Give credit to credit to you, man. That joke had me rolling over a couple <laughs> minutes. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, well, that's a classic. But overall, man, I thought it was a great pay-per-view. Coming out two weeks from All In, that was a great pay-per-view as well. But now, let me ask you. Do they continue the same timeline next year, or did they wait a month? <clears throat> so apparently, uh, All In's going to be sooner next year. It's going to be in July. It's already scheduled for Arlington, Texas. I want to say it was Arlington, Texas. Somewhere yeah. in Texas. For July... Well, I think All Out is still scheduled to be around Labor Day weekend. So now we have about a month or about two weeks apart, right? I personally think me and uh, the old man that's on the show were talking about that they should really have All In in the beginning of the year sometime and then All Out around, I guess, Labor Day as well. Yeah. And another thing, um, this has been a little bit of criticism, but AEW is known to do these pay-per-views at the same city constantly. All Out in the last couple of years has always been in Chicago. Do you think it's time? I personally don't want to, but as a real wrestling fan, I have my own opinion, but I want to hear yours. Do you think it's time for them to move out of that market and go to another city and expand it? And let me add this. I was there, and I wasn't expecting it to be as packed as it was. It was no one was. Packed. Yeah. <laughs> no one was. I can tell you that, unfortunately. From um, all sides, it was full. But what do you think? Do you think they should go to Ohio? Do you think they should go to Minnesota? Down south? To the west coast? To the east Milwaukee, coast? To all those areas. To add to your point, I agree. They should. They should, right. I mean, it was good. As a wrestling fan, we have it in our backyard. Dude, we don't have to go to a hotel. We literally can go home. It's cool, whatever. Right. We know the area. We can do what we got to do. But it's like at this point, it's it's a cost on the consumer. Right. 
And then not only that, one, especially if they want to go to multiple shows. Right. But it's not only a that. Big cost on the consumers. Go ahead. You don't grow. You're always in that market. See, the biggest thing with WCW was they were only down south. That was their biggest fan base. Because when it came up north, their fan base was all WWF. Yeah. 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 Down south was always WCW, but you had WWF going down south occasionally. They dipped their toes in that type of market, but AEW is kind of doing that WCW route where they're kind of scared to expand themselves. They can't, though. If they really want to really make a name for themselves, they really have to start doing what we said before. Go to different cities, but do the small arenas. Um, and, and keep it at arenas where you can sit 12,000 people. It, right. Listen, I would rather, as, as a wrestling fan myself, I would rather see that than them try to go to the Pfizer Forum and sell 5,000 seats. And it's like, dude, look at how much is empty. Right. You're just bashing your own company with this. You're literally just, you're giving Marks a reason to keep making fun of you. Right. At this point, go to an 8,000 seat place. No one's making fun of TNA. No one's, no one's saying anything about TNA, even though they're selling out high school arena gyms. There are about like 1,000 people in that. 1,000, yeah. 2,000. They're- I've been in a couple of TNA shows to admit that it is really small market. Um, let's see our uh, moder- moderator. What does he say? He says maybe Tony Khan is restricted due to family outside boundaries. So put it this way. Uh, Tony Khan does have some real estate, what I hear in Chicago. And he right. does have a love for Chicago in itself because he grew up there apparently. Yeah. Which he loves the city a lot. So Legend. Legend. maybe Legend. he has a really biased opinion about Chicago where it's hard for him to leave the spot that actually helped him grow the company. Because you remember the first pay per view, it was. But my. Okay, so listen, I'm not going to sit here and say leave completely. Do what WWE does. Come back. Come back eventually. Come yeah. back eventually. But at this point, it's like, cool, you have the love for Chicago. Cool, come back. So put it this way another interesting fact when we were over there, they were already giving out tickets for their annual event in Chicago, which is Thanksgiving Dynamite yeah. Evolution. <laughs> so it's always a repeat of the same yeah. cities. Which I feel like it is hurting their market a lot. It, it's hurting their market for a season. Secondly, though, it's hurting it's hurting them. It is. I mean, I like the fact that they're coming to the Panther Arena in, what, a couple weeks? Yeah. They're, they're, so they're going to be coming to the Panther Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is literally across the street from the Pfizer Forum. Smaller arena, smaller venue. However, though, it's what's going to make you start popping out. Right. Again, start rolling out with it with the smaller arenas. Go to, go to Columbus, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio, and then you start dipping your toes all across. Yep. And I feel, again, as I stated to you before, and I'll, I'll say it again, they tried to expand the market too quickly. They try to go for the arenas where you're sitting 18, 19,000, and it's like, dude, no one really knows your company. Keep yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't change a thing. And I get it. People were sitting there saying nonstop. If you went to the, to the United Center, I'll go there. Guess what? They didn't show up. Right. So at this point, keep doing what you're doing. Watch your company grow in that asset, and then keep going. I I was hearing a little rumor before coming here actually that supposedly tomorrow's before the Jaguar game that they're trying that Tony Khan apparently is going to have a match before the NFL game for Mexican Independence celebration. Oh lord! I think it's Sammy Guerrero and uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, hologram versus uh, in the tag team match versus the uh, I forgot the other tag team, but it's set to uh, start before the kickoff. Literally before kickoff, they're gonna have a whole match in that in that stadium, which is kind of crazy to think about. I kind of dig it. Like I know you're kind of like, but I kind of dig it. So I'm looking in from both sides. I said I love football. I love wrestling. I feel that it's gonna be received well by others by by a lot. But don't expect the packed house. <laughs> well, Plain and simple, because people are going to be like, all right, cool, they're just showing some random dudes over there. Because a lot of thought is they're showing random guys over there in the thong, you know, and filling up on each other while they're still outside in their doing their their um, their their tailgate. Well, I mean, put it this way. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, personally, of course, I'm not expecting a packed house. Who the hell comes early for a football game? <laughs> a lot of people just to tailgate. So just imagine the this tailgate, one. The tailgate, though, I'm saying. So, I mean, at yeah. this point, though, it's like, I see Tony Khan saying, look, instead of you guys 
all standing out there and wasting more money than what you have to spend it here. And we'll do this. We'll do this. And I get what you're saying. I appreciate it because at least he's trying something different. And at least <coughs> he's trying to pay a little homage to a little bit of the heritage out there. Yeah. At least he's trying something. It may not sound great. It may not look great either. But, hey, I mean, you're trying to do something different, which I could give some credit where credit's due. So, I don't know. That's my opinion about that. But I get what you're saying. As a football fan, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? You know? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are going to be sitting there like, what? Like, why, why is this even not? Or who knows? Maybe some crowds are going to be into it. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're drunk enough. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're drunk enough. You're probably going to have fun regardless. Why I would. Yeah. Might as well. All righty, guys. And to the next topic. We have Vince McMahon documentary coming out on Netflix, apparently. Ooh, man, this is going to be controversial. I smell it. They're not going to shy away from any topics is what I'm hearing. I mean, I'm ready for that. I'm hoping for it. I want to see it. Throw everything out there. Throw everything at them. Throw everything but the kitchen sink. I want to see it. I want to see the man get exposed for what he is. Look. As a guy who changed wrestling, he did a great job. As a guy behind the scenes, the guy we saw on TV wasn't too far-fetched from the guy that was in reality, unfortunately. It, dude, you know what? I think, actually, it was Vince McMahon we were seeing a bit on TV. That's what I'm saying, yeah. No, no, like, there was no far-fetched. Like, it's, it's no, that was a sarcasm. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. that's a Vince black and white. Yeah. There was no other way. He thought he was untouchable, thought he could do whatever he wanted, and thought he could get away with so much. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He played the actual character in TV that he was in real life. It's crazy, man. Sometimes, like I always say, dude, never meet your heroes. Because in the end of the day, they're not who they say they are. And unfortunately for Vincent, man, hell no, he wasn't fucking the the way he is. But this documentary is ready to expose, I guess, everything out there. I'm not sure... If they're affiliated in any way with WWE, like well, even a little bit. I do have one thing for sure. This is allegedly, this is allegedly, or this is also 100%. No WWE executive or anyone backstage gave approval of the final cut of the documentary. Good. And I'm glad. So basically, this is all everything finding. There is nothing here being under the rug. Like everything's going to be brought out to light. You know who's probably right now panicking out there in headquarters is uh, the Levesque family. I think so. Yeah, because, I mean, there's stuff out there that they, I'm sure they don't want to put out there. Like, if they have a hold of something, it's going to come back on them. Yeah. What do you think The Rock came back and got a good share of the market of TKO? It's because they're ready for I've, something I've bad been, to come I've out. I've been there. saying it, dude. I've been saying it for a long time. We All the times we've talked about it with other shows, I've said, look, dude. Rock came back for a reason. It wasn't because of, because of, oh, I see potential in this. No, it, it, to, to be a wrestler. It was to sit there and say, look. And to do a favor. It's cover my, cover my ass, dude, because it's about to get nasty up yeah. in here. This is just the tip of the iceberg, everything we've been seeing. But a lot of these places are going to start coming now and start doing a lot of things that, and we're not ready for this. So, I don't want to throw too much out there, but, you know, the lawsuit against Viz with the Janelle Grant? Yep. So apparently at one point, not too long ago, uh, apparently WWE was actually helping Vince's attorney to get this shit all settled up and get it under wraps as quick as possible. And it was too late. <laughs> and now that, that kind of went under the rug. But that's the reason why is because there's something that, what's his name, the other con? Uh, Nick Con. Nick Con is also involved in these allegations somehow, some way. And he's also going to be in a lot of fire if somehow this documentary gets out there that he was involved in all this fucking process. It's scary. Uh, and it, it, look, we're, we're speculating. None of this shit might not even get to the documentary. But the fact that it's going out there, the fact that WWE didn't have any, you know, say in the final cut means anything could be out there in the end of the day. And it is. Yeah. So that's going to be crazy, man. Uh, moderator, what's the, uh, date that's going to be dropped, by the way? That way we could announce it. Because I'm going to watch it day one. September 25th. 25th, day one. I'm going to be there. Apparently that's on Grand Slam, but I'm going to watch both of them. I'm going to watch Grand Slam and I'll watch the documentary right after, bro. I'm actually very psyched for this. I've never been psyched for a documentary till now. 
Like, I watch, you know, all the legends and all these other biographies. But this one is going to, this one I got to watch, man. This is going to be controversial. Man. It's because we grew up with, honestly, we grew up with, like, a character of Vince McMahon. Little did we know that this is Vince McMahon. The monster. McMahon. Yeah. Like, that he was, honestly, uh, the one, like, a, and honestly, do it again. As wrestling fans, we grew up with this. We thought it was a storyline. Little did we know he thinks he, about this. Like, he plays time. a fucking part outside. But also, he thinks <laughs> about other things all the time. Where it's out of the gate. And it's like, bro, chill. <laughs> Uh, six episodes will be on, according to our... Hey, yeah. all right, so we're going to have six episodes of, like, we're glued to the TV, waiting for every moment to happen type yep. of thing. Because I'm going to be watching, I'm going to rewatch it, probably. I, I want to catch every single little thing from it. I think and we should talk about it every single time. Every single I think, every yeah, single I think we should do a we should show. Do, yeah, yeah, we should definitely do a show. Yeah, a little roundabout show every single week. Why not? I'm excited, dude. I'm gonna grab some popcorn. I'm gonna pop it, and I hope this guy, man, serves his time eventually. He may not, but at least get it out there that he was involved in this stuff. At least admit, yeah, I'm guilty of this, but hey, I'm gonna do this and that. But will at least he though, nah, it's too much pride at that I point. I guess at this point, will he though? Like, dude, it took him a while to even get out of the chair of WWE. It's, yeah, I, I don't think so, but I'm hoping that at least justice will be so- served. Somehow, some way. Um, any last thought on the documentary you want to want to add? I'm excited, dude. I'm just excited to see how everything is going to play out. Bruce Pritchard is going to be a, basically a big part of it as well. Because notice his name has been really quiet recently. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, mm-hmm. though, he was in bad health recently. Or I think that's what Linda McMahon was saying. That apparently he was in bad that. help, and but I think uh, someone defended him that got backlash. I forgot what uh, WWE legend said. Oh, I think it was Mark Henry. Yeah, it was Mark Henry that says, oh, well, that sucks, man. You know, Vince, this and that. But it's like, Mark, guy's a piece of shit. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? But that's the thing. Here's the issue. Uh, uh, Well, some people say bad help, you know, bad help equals help in his court image, which is true. Because what happened to Snuka? When he got, you know, uh, charged finally for killing his uh, girlfriend back years ago, I guess he was already, he lost his fucking mind. So they couldn't really put him out there, you know, and charge him. And then eventually, like a week later, he died. But he was found guilty. So I guess this is kind of like a little, A, he's in bad health. He can't do jail time. So yeah. give him some slack. He's about, what, 80-something years old? Yeah. Yeah. So I could see that going about. Um, But I was going to say something. Yeah, so here's the thing, man. You're going to have a lot of legends offend them no matter what. Because a lot of them may not know. Or they might have have, but a lot of it, a lot of legends, that was their father figure, unfortunately. John Cena's one of them. John Cena, Orton, Mark Henry, and I'm sure there's a bunch of hell. Maybe Undertaker. Tri- Triple H, Undertaker. Undertaker, <laughs> definitely. Undertaker. Undertaker. Brock Lesnar. Yes. Yeah. So. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. And unfortunately, they Triple can't H see Triple H, for sure. Him. Yeah, they can't see him in any other light. But, I mean, hey, man, sometimes, uh, you know, the people you love do, do evil shit. So, I mean, I'm excited. I can't wait. So, by the way, these are the people, according to moderator, just like basically gave us a little bit of a snippet. These are the people interviewed for the documentary. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Eric Bischoff, John Cena, Bret the Hitman Hart, Jimmy Hart, Hulk Hogan, Paul Levesque, Bruce Pritchard, and The Rock, as well as Vince McMahon himself. I give about four guys that are going to tell you the truth on that list. And six that are going to really cover all that up. Yeah, like, oh, he's not that bad. <laughs> as they're showing him, you know, make Trish Stratus bark and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, he was just laying around, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, I like the list, but there's only like four guys that are going to tell you the truth. The other guys are going to try to cover up and try to wiggle their way out of it, especially like, Vincent Mann himself. Unfortunately, I feel like Brad Hart is going to talk from a place of hurt. Well, he should. I mean, Why not? He's definitely got screwed. They were about to make a documentary years ago called Bret Hart Screwed because they were going to go taint them like they did with The Ultimate Warrior. So why not? I mean, yeah, they made good amends between each other. But he doesn't own no company anything in the world. WWE screwed him. WCW screwed him. He doesn't own nothing to the world, man. Why not? Go all out, man. Say what you got to say, dude. At the end of the day, you got your bag and keep it going, man. 
That's all you could do. At this point, hold on. Let me just quote unquote here. Say what either Sean, I can't remember if it was Sean or Vince who said this. Brett screws Brett. I don't buy all that shit. <laughs> I don't buy it either, but just, have it just for the fun of it. Alrighty, so one last thing. Let's end this off in a happy moment. Congrats to Valkyria. She got engaged. Hey. There we go. A little happy ending for the day. Actually, it was announced today, so congrats to you. Congrats to you, girl. Yeah. Let's wish hope you, everything goes well. Wish you lots, lots of lots of happiness, yeah. and lots of joy, and lots of love. Well, guys, this has been the report, man. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.